What's the word, y'all? Tyron Lue, the LA Clippers, asked us to give them 10 games before we start to react to the James Harden era. And for a minute, I was giving them that. I was going to give them 10 games of a sample size before I drew a conclusion, before I even made any video. They could have been 10 and 0. They could have been 0 and 10. I was going to give them those 10 games. Nope. They don't get that benefit of the doubt. They're now 0-4 in the James Harden era, and they just lost to the Memphis Grizzlies, who have looked like one of the two worst teams in all of basketball going into that day. This is inexcusable work for the Clippers, and they got to pick up the pieces early. Before we talk about that, let me promote my podcast. We had Greg Williams on the show. What a great guy. Look how he's smiling. We're smiling. We had a great conversation about basketball, about things outside of basketball, all of the memeable moments that Grant Williams has had in his NBA career. We've talked about them on this. So it's available on Apple, on Spotify, or on YouTube. All of the links are in the description. Absolutely, I will continue to promote my podcast every chance I get because it is my baby, and we're growing the show. We want to be the number one basketball podcast in the world. Right now, we're in the top five which we appreciate but we want to be number one so uh go show some love if you can all right now i'm back on my negative stuff you feel me <laughs> go show some love to the podcast now let's start talking about these clippers now the worst part about this is because i don't i mean i do want to make this video because i do have a lot to say but i would much rather i guess shed the light on like the the houston rockets who are on a six game winning streak or the minnesota Timberwolves continue to dominate games or the fact that harry's maxi just dropped the 50 piece like there's a lot of other storylines in the nba and hopefully we get to talk about them soon but the james harden trade is such a monumental trade for it to happen when it did and for james harden to be the talent that he is and with the clippers to be all in giving up every single first round pick to 2030 this just takes priority on this channel of things to talk about so let's do it they just lost to the memphis grizzlies not ja moran hell not even tyus jones shout out to the grizzlies you, you wouldn't have known that they were like what the worst team in the league going into this game like they looked really good shout out to uh new short king like there's a new short king in the nba jacob gilliard is like six seven six eight he's starting for the grizzlies right now that's how beat up they are he started for the grizzlies and he looks decent so shout out to him you know I, I never really have notes in these things i maybe have a few tweets pulled up but i don't really have a direction so i'm just gonna go off and talk about the things that have been worrying me over the past four games the main thing, the, the main thing, see, I can live with losses and wins. It's basketball. This is the NBA at the end of the day. There's so much parity in the league. The best team in the league can lose to the worst team in the league on any given day. That's just sports. That's just basketball. But the thing that bothers me the most is that every single player on this team looks like they're trying to reinvent themselves, which is not what you want them to do. Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Russell Westbrook, these are guys that have identities as NBA players. And all of that is gone out the window as they try to, to figure out what James Harden is on their team. When they made the James Harden trade, the main thing I said on this channel is that we need to see James Harden change his game for the others and not the other way around. And when I'm watching them, they feel like they're the ones adjusting their game, which is just not the move. At this stage of James Harden's career, he is still a very good basketball player, but at 34 years old, when he's not as fast as he used to be, he is not the system, so we shouldn't be playing as such. Or if you are going to make him the system, Tyron Lue, that is your call. You are the coach. You know more basketball than I ever will. If that is your call, then you have to get the other guys to recognize that because the amount of times I've seen somebody wide open on the catch and shoot three and they decide to dribble to the left and try to get to shoot a contested shot is it's crazy if he's gonna be the system and he's gonna put the ball in the money for the corner shooters they gotta shoot the ball again i would prefer that he's not the system but instead he's playing within the system but but that's just the way it is right now and you want to know the crazy part about it i actually saw some pretty decent actions and things that the clippers were doing it wasn't just all isolation ball now it, it ended up being that later down the stretch but early in this game they were running actions and they were not capitalizing on them and in this game uh, the memphis grizzlies were up by a good amount like they were coasting and then in the fourth quarter the la clippers went on a run You're like okay this this version of the clippers look cool they were diving on the floor for balls uh, uh norman powell was getting a lot of open looks of paul george creating and it was a lot of cool stuff and then you look around and you recognize oh my god james harden is not on the court they ran this whole run when they ended up actually taking the lead in this game. And with a minute and a half left, they were down by like one or two points. James Harden gets thrown back into the game. He hits a, a big three, and, and, and then they, they go on to lose. Now, I'm not here to say that James Harden is the absolute end-all, be-all problem because there's a lot of different things wrong with this team. But is, is it a coincidence that they go on their best run 
when he's not on the floor and not, I'm not even just talking about the final run it happened a few times in this game and actually Harala Bob, Bob oh Harala Bob um has the tweet the Clippers have scored 1.32 points per possession with Harden out today when he was on the bench and a 0.82 when he is in they've given up a 1.32 points on D with him and and 0.72 with him without not great. It's true. Again, we talk about that run that they went on the fourth quarter. You look out on the court. Those are just the players that they would have closed the game with, let's say, two weeks ago. It was Terrence Mann on the court. It, it was Norman Powell on the court. And then Russell Westbrook, uh, Russell Westbrook, Paul George, and Kawhi Leonard. Like, those guys were Clippers two weeks ago pre-trade. That was the run they went on. But that's not just it. Bismack Biombo made them look small. And it's the second time I've talked about the Clippers this year since the trade where I've mentioned the fact that they just look small. Zubac is just not the only problem. The roster is small in general after the trade, but it's it's just a lot. Busy, Busy didn't have a job two weeks ago, and he was as impactful as almost anybody on the court today just by will and size. That's not a good sign when you're in the Western Conference that have so many, so many High-level bigs. And if Busy is outplaying you, you don't even need a Nikola Jokic stand. What is Towns or Gobert going to do? What is Alfred Shingun going to do? Um, what is Sabonis going to do? Anthony Davis? Even Yusuf Nurkic? Demontis Sabonis? These are people that are just straight-up bruisers and just going to beat you up. And that, that is a team in its current construction that will get beat up a lot. And listen, my hope is that through four games, everybody's overreacting, and then boom, the next six, because he's, again, he said give him a 10-game sample size, and then the next six, they go 6-0, oh, they rattle it off. That's best-case scenario. It's possible. But there's just, there's just too much, too many problems. A big shout-out to Steve Jones Jr. He is one of the best followers on NBA Twitter for NBA Breakdown. He put together a bunch of different tweets of different actions and different things the Clippers were doing. And this is one of the things that I've noticed, and I'm happy that he took clip of it. Here's Kawhi Leonard drawing the defense. Boom. Open shot. That this, this right here is an open shot. That's Paul George. What does he do? Like, what is happening? What? Who, where are the Monstars? And why did they take these people plowers? Because this is a shot that we've seen Paul George make 150 million times. But instead of doing what was easy, he decided... To make it more difficult and Desmond Bain stayed in the play and caused the miss. Oh, Kenny, you overreacting. You overreacting. That can't happen uh, too many times, right? That can't happen too many times. Even Terrence Mann. Shoot the ball, man. Shoot the ball, man. But again, as I mentioned earlier, there are some interesting things that they've been incorporating over the last four games. This is good action. I mean, the, that's Paul George taking a jump shot over me. Because <laughs> look how small that brother is on the court. You feel me? That's a shot that he can make for sure. So, like, if there are things happening within the Clippers system that look like they can work, but they haven't. And four games is just a long time for it not to click at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it wasn't clicking, that's fine. You would have an average to below average offensive game. They have, when with the five on the court, the five that matter the most, their starting five on the court, they have the... Actually, I'll show you. I'll show you how bad it is. It's the second one here. Russell Westbrook, James Harden, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Zubats. Four games... Almost 50 minutes play. It is their second most used lineup now. So it's not like we can we can yell a, ba a small sample size because this has the same amount of sample size as the pre-trade with um, Robert Covington in that was uh, really, really good. It's a net rating of a minus 19.5. They can not score with this unit. They can not score with this unit. And again, it's not there hasn't been many flashes of it actually being effective and when he was traded i said in the initial video we were doing the reactions at 2 30 in the morning i said i don't know if james harden and russell westbrook should start together and i got a ton of tweets from russell westbrook fans like oh kenny how can we throw him to the bench because especially right after that game russell westbrook had an amazing night i forgot who it was against and it has nothing to do with the production or how good or how how bad russell westbrook is it's about the fit and he's not the reason this is the worst offense of all time exaggeration but it's not him but other people on their bench might fit better and we might might want to see James Harden and, and Kawhi run one unit which they did today and then Russell Westbrook and Paul George on the other unit which they, we also saw today Tyra Lu needs to figure it out again that's why he asked for 10 games but the the game the, the lineup that's going to be closing out the games is the one with all four so you don't just need to figure out the divvy up, how to divvy it up. You also need it to click when they're all four on the court because most of the times, that's how you're going to close. 
tonight for the last six minutes of the game, or the, the last six of seven minutes of the game, there was no James. And then James got inserted back in. And then they couldn't score. So you need to figure that part out. How can you get it so when people are open, they shoot the damn ball? How can we get it that Paul George is not saying that he's turning into a glue guy? He, he cleared it up. He cleared it up. But still, crazy quote. And then Kawhi Leonard and Zubats are arguing on the bench. I don't know what that was about. I don't know what it was about. He said he won't talk about it. But this is not the type of things that were happening last year, two years ago. Um, I guess the, the silver lining is that we have had a fully engaged Kawhi Leonard and Paul George so far. But I haven't seen the Terminator Kawhi much this season. He had one game against the Lakers where he was lights out. But other than that, Kawhi's been cool. But not all NBA, one of the top 10 players in the league good. And they need that version of Kawhi to show his head, not just sometimes, but majority of the times. Um, so let me know what you think about the clips. I feel like there's a lot I did not get to say. But ultimately, um, it has not looked good through the first four. Go stream or watch the Kenny Beach and podcast. That's all, that's all I got to say.